welcome to part one of my full knife collection. It's gonna be a mini series I'm doing. That's why I did the trailer. So, if you guys know what time it is, turn down the volume, because here comes a little bit of music. <laughs> intro right now I already had filmed the whole video I thought you know what I, I put so much work into the trailer and there was so much work that went into the filming I didn't like the quality I'm not gonna have a video playing in the background uh, we're just gonna get right into it so I really don't want to take too much time because it's already a long video so let's uh, let's turn this around and start taking a look at all the knives that are in my collection not just the case not just the ten thousand dollars you guys saw before but everything I have that's part of my collection that's not just trash or giveaway or stuff like that so let's turn it around ladies and gentlemen so my plan is and i did plan this i thought this out we are going to go through the case first stuff you've already seen there might be a couple things in here that are new additions then we'll get into the stuff that came in and then new stuff that i have new additions to the collection and then we're going to get into all the weird stuff that most of you guys have never seen so let's go ahead and let's start taking a look at this top row, which is my Ferrum Forge collection. We're going to start with the first Ferrum Forge that was done as uh, like a mid-tech or an in-house machine build. This was done on a Tormac in Elliot's shop. It was the first of the in-house machined knives he ever did. This is the Ferrum Forge. I had uh, somebody coming up to give me a delivery and ask me a question. Uh, there was two people. So I decided to uh, just receive. This is the Ferrum Forge Predium. Like I said, this is the first of the knives that Elliot did in-house build style. Uh, he did this on a Tormac. After the rest of the knives you're going to see here, none of those were done as an in-house machining. The rest of them were all done uh, with having like SDPM or somebody make parts and then Elliot would uh, just do the assembly and stuff. But this one, Elliot actually had a machine in the shop. He was unhappy with it. He was unhappy with this knife in general, says he doesn't like the way it presents his company anymore. So he was trying to get rid of these. Uh, he threw this away about five or six times, um, told me that he wanted, he didn't want to see it again. Um, he basically told me, he's like, you can have it if you just get it out of my shop and gave it to me as a gift one night while we were there. Um, this knife is very nice. Uh, I, I disagree with him. I think this is a very well done knife. Uh, it's done in LMAX. It's done titanium. I did the read the ceramic and all that and gave it the laid the edge back to account for a little bit of the edge thickness. It cuts really well. This is a good outdoors knife. So there you go. First one, Ferrum Forge Predium. Second knife is also a Ferrum Forge. This is the Ferrum Forge Gavco. Mike Gavick Ferrum Forge collaboration called the Mako. So this was... The second of the three collaborations they did, they had one that they called the FERCO, which was Ferrum Forge and Gavco, F-E-R-K-O, FERCO. Um, this is the second one, the Mako. I love this knife. I, I, I lusted after one of these for a very long time. I don't carry it very often, um, but I got this from a friend of mine. We did a barter deal. I did a bunch of sharpening and anodizing and things like that for him in lieu of this and I really do like it. I've, I've wavered time to time and like, should I put, should I sell it? Should I actually keep it? Um, I still don't know. I really, I really think that this is a knife that I would regret getting rid of. So as you can see, I, once again, I've refinished this with my own Anno um, and pivot and restone washed the blade. So there you go. There is the Ferrum Forge Gavco collaboration. Make knife in the collection is this was a gift this was this is a grail this is one of two knives i said i had to own someday and basically i have purchased a couple little items but they haven't been anything that's just like i gotta have that like it, it i could live without anything else except for this and one other knife in my collection i think you guys know what it is but this is the ferrum forge fortis i think this is the fortis b or fortis i can't it was fortis a and b one had one had a very similar milling pattern to this. The other one had these straight lines. I wanted this specific knife. I wanted that blade finish. I wanted this handle pattern. And I did do a little bit, uh, just a little bit. Uh, I refinished the scales. I black ceramic the hardware uh, and the 
the low spots just to give it a little offset. But this was a gift for my little buddy Nico. This knife is a lot of fun. Uh, it is a great knife. I don't carry it as much because I can't duplicate that finish. But goodness gracious, guys, that is so comfortable and so beefy and so just over the top. I just, I love it for what it is. This is... This is a door kicker. This is this is the this is a big beefy heavy knife, but the action on it is just so incredibly smooth and nice. So there you go, Ferrum Forge Fortis, OG Fortis, not the production Fortis. This knife is the Mordax, the Ferrum Forge Mordax. Like I said, this entire top row is all Ferrum Forge knives. We looked at this one the other day in a fancy five uh, five fast fancy finishes. Um, this was a slab finish. We did refinish the blade with a more more fancy blade finish, but this was the first of two knives that are very similar. The next one is its little brother. This was the Mordax. This is a knife that Elliot made. Uh, it was really popular. He actually released another version of this, which was the production button lock version in aluminum and one in titanium through Protec, which was done really well. Uh, these are great knives. These knives are a little thick though. That's one of the things that a lot of people complain about. They're thick, but this is, this is like one of those epitome of overbuilt purpose built knives. This is a great, great knife for just about any task. Uh, and the N690 on it's done really well. It holds a really good edge. Uh, this is one of, this is one of my favorite designs period is just this type of design, like the Mordax the NTAC and some of the other just straightforward designs that are just done really well. So there is number four. We're not going to, I'm, I'm going to stop calling them out. That's the, the, the next one is the Mordax. So I'm doing these as individual segments because that way I can take breaks in between because this is going to be a long video. So this is the Mordax little brother. Uh, we saw this the other day. This is the Ferrum Forge NTAC, which is basically just a shrunken down Mordax. Um, now, this was someone told Elliot, like, your knives are all the same. And he looked at the Mordax and the NTAC and was like, yeah. And the guy called him a no talent ass clown. So Elliot named this the NTAC, N T A C, no talent ass clown. This one was done with the diamond pattern. This was the first Ferrum Forge knife I ever picked up. I was at their shop. They had their mother's NTAC on the workbench they just finished working on. Um, I picked it up and I was like, okay. Okay, I've got to have one of these. Nice, small, compact package. Great work knife. This has got a worker finish on it. You can see it's been used a lot to the point where I've cut things where there is a, a complete shiny spot on the blade there, but it still does a great job. I actually added this choil myself. Elliot did that for me, and I even did the oversized stop pin when this got a little bit out of... Uh, when it got a little bit out of spec, I uh, had to over add an oversized stop pin because I had a lot of blade play. So this was the first Ferrum Forge knife I ever purchased. I actually got one for my father. You're going to see that in a little bit. It, I'm actually, I probably won't get it. I have two of these. One of these is my daughter's and one of them is mine. This was a, I got one as a gift for my father. It's how much I liked it as a retirement gift. So there you go, Ferrum Forge NTAC. Now we're going to get further up the spectrum and look at some of the fancier Ferrum Forge knives I have there on this end. Um, so this is the Ferrum Forge Archbishop. This is a one-off. This is the only one that was done like this. This was sitting on Elliot's bench one time when I walked in the shop and I was like, Elliot, don't even put that on the website. He had not even put an edge on it yet. Um, I came the next day with cash to pick it up from him. Uh, so this is the Ferrum Forge Archbishop. This was an in-house build. This one never even got a name. A lot of times they would name like the the one-offs and the the master or the maker's choice. So this was just one that I, I had to have. I still carry this knife a lot. The action on this is amazing. Great in hand, great blade shape, nice. This one is not as thick behind the edge. This was about the time that they started bringing that, that behind the edge thickness down. This was the, this is probably the most carried outside of this one. This one, the, the NTAC got carried a lot for work. Outside of the NTAC, this is probably like the second most, either the most or second most carried of my two, of my Ferrum Forges, all eight of them. So this one, uh, this one came like this. The ceramic on it has held up incredibly well. It's gotten a lot of use. I have, I have screwed this up and had to have it fixed twice now. I've broken two Ferrum Forge knives. I've broken this one twice and the NTAC once. Not broken, broken, but like broken to the point where I had to take it to the shop and just couldn't do it on my own. So... This thing is just beautiful. 
Beautiful, beautiful knife. The action on all of these is super smooth. This one actually needs cleaned. Um, this was the first knife I ever got that had an aperture that I could really finger flick. So there you go. Ferrum Forge Archbishop. I love that two-tone. I love that two-tone, that ceramic and satin. So let's go ahead and look at the next, next knife in the collection is, this is where we start getting into my makers. I have two makers choice Ferrum Forge knives. Uh, this was the Mako, they're not the Mako, I'm sorry, the Spinner. Um, now this was the third of three Michael Gavick, Gavco, and Ferrum Forge designs. You see both their logos on it, just like this one. Um, so as you can see too, the Ferrum Forge logo has evolved over time. FFKW, um, this, uh, this was the newer iteration of their of their uh, logo. But this is a fun knife. I, I have to say, I've said it a bunch of times, this is probably, of all of their knives, the design that I find the blade shape to be the most aesthetically pleasing. It is a very attractive blade shape. Lots of facets, lots of, of, of interesting things going on. Almost a Tonto, but not quite. It has a very pronounced high spot, like not quite a secondary angle, but you can definitely see where it drops off. So clip point, uh, super thin behind the edge, nice and slicey. I don't carry this knife as much as I would like, mainly because it just, there's no, I would, you know, it's so hard. If I take this up, Chris and Elliot would probably re refinish it for me. But the fact is like, it, it would be so hard and I would hate to have them put that extra work into it. So I don't carry it as often. It is a great knife though, super comfortable. The action on all of these is amazing. Finger aperture, flipper activation, just, just great. So this one was called the Marlin. So there is the Ferrum Forge Gavco Colab Spinner Maker's Choice. I don't know how it happened, but the, the footage got erased, but this is my Ferrum Forge Master Blaster. This was a gift from Nico and Tino. It's all hand carved. This is a Maker's Choice. We've seen this in a lot of videos. We're just gonna touch on it because I'm actually filming this while I'm editing, realize that somehow the footage from this got deleted. So yeah, this one is the Ferrum Forge Master Blaster. Mine was done as a full uh, maker's choice. It's all been hand carved um, and hand finished by Elliot. And this is probably one of my prized possessions because this was a gift from Nico and Tino. And then Elliot just kind of went all nuts on doing it the way I would want it, um, even the uh back the the spacers the standoffs are hand carved all done in that futuristic style that he does that i really love the geiger s stuff truly an awesome gift and one of my favorite knives so there is the ferrum forge master blast that was all of the ferrum forge in-house stuff we will see some ferrum forge design stuff that i have um throughout the rest of the case because they're just uh, they're in different areas, but I tried, I tried real hard to group stuff together. So they're here, they're here. I have, I, I'm really OCD about how I have this case put together. So that brings us to this corner here going in line. This is my React Horizon D still hundred percent. David, if you watch this, David Deng or any of the guys from React, the best production knife I have ever owned. I love this knife so much. It was the first like production knife I got that showed me how good production knives could be. The action on this is just, I mean, it is literally super smooth. Just listen to it. The action on it's great. Has had, I've had zero issues with this knife since day one. I redid the anno on it. I added a little bit of a choil because, you know, just because I wanted that, uh, I didn't want that ramp there, but nothing functionally ever has been wrong with this knife. Holds an edge like crazy, just beautiful. And in the pocket, it is so, so comfortable to carry. This uh, milled sculpted pocket clip um, is great. This is not the original configuration. It had the carbon fiber and titanium construction. Um, this was the, this, when I got this, I had never been as happy with a knife. And I can honestly say, I've never been as happy with a production knife as I have been with this one. And as a matter of fact, to tell you the truth, I don't have a knife in my pocket, and this was the one that was in there before, and that's where it's going 
right now. So the empty spot where my Riat was, because I wanted to put it back in my pocket, it was only in the case because I was shooting the video. This is my Ultramar Street. This is Ramon Chavez's, this is basically a 228 that has been shrunk down. This is the uh, Ramon Chavez Ultramar Street done by Riat. This is a contender for one of the smoothest smoothest knives i have and i mean it is hazardously smooth from time to time um the action on it is just amazing beautiful blade i love that blade shape the pocket clip is what does it for me a lot of people find it garish uh, my friend chris over at cerberus knives hates this pocket clip um i love it i love it because it sets this knife apart it makes it look different than some of the other things you would see the action on it's great that pocket clip for as big and bulky and garish as it is is not a hot spot and it's just this thing is a lot of fun the only thing i wish is i wish that the blade was not so thick behind the edge up here at that forward part of the grind but as far as like just having a knife that basically this doesn't get carried unless i'm going somewhere and i want something that's going to get attention this is it's pocket jewelry this is this was in a five fast one time about uh like striking knives but these things are incredibly well done they did a full-size version of this the 229 which is basically the ultramar or it's the redencion production version it's the full-size one because 228 was the custom or mid-tech um and i thought i wanted one of those so bad but now that i've handled those i like the smaller version better i did open that choil up ever so slightly and redid the finish as you can see the two-tone that's one of the things that you'll typically see on knives that I really like is I'll do a two-tone, but I'll do it in a fashion where you're you're only like you see the black ceramic and then you have this and then you see the black and that. It's it's really attractive. Uh so great, great knife. The Ramon Chavez Ultramar Redencion, uh, the Ultramar Street. This knife is the first knife that ever made an appearance on my YouTube channel. This is my Microtech DOC that has been Sithed out. So of course I have the Darth Vader bead on it. Um, this got carried so much that this grip tape, the skateboard tape came out. Like I, I got diesel fuel or something on it. It got all soft and it came out. I had thought about trying to make some new ones for it. I actually like the way it looks like this. Uh, this knife has had a lot of pocket time. Did red ceramic on it. This is a very, very well done nightmare style grind on this Microtech. Mick Strider and Anthony Marfion got together on this one. They really knocked it out of the park. This actually has had a lot of influence on some of the things that I've done on knives. If you were to look at the thumb ramp on the Stonefish that we're going to see later because it's in a box of all the other stuff. I really was one of the first knives I got that I really, I, I can't tell you how much it opened my eyes to how good some of the production knives could be. Got this before I got the Riat. Um, I'd say this would this be, if I was going to have to come up with a, what is my second best production knife I've ever owned? I'd have to say it'd be a tie between this one and another Ferrum Forge design that was done by Wii that we're going to look at in a little bit. Uh, this one does have a special place in my heart. It, it was, like I said, the first first video I did on the channel. This thing has been carried so, so much. The anodizing that they do, the hard coat that they do over at Microtech is just incredible. It still has held up all these years. The ceramic um, has, it's this thing, it's dropped and dinked and used and carried. This is a bad neighborhood knife, to tell you the truth, but uh, just beautiful. And like I said, the LMAX on it and the action, the blade, the blade on it being an LMAX, it's insane how good this blade is. And then the action on this for such a big, heavy knife. It's nuts how good the action is on this. And the pocket clip is not the FU clip that, that Jim Skelton talked about. It's not a bad clip. I carry this in my waistband a lot of times if I'm going to carry it. Uh, one of the only, I think I only have a couple knives that have lanyards. Uh, this would be one of them. So there you go. The Microtech DOC. Death on Contact. There's a shade of serial numbers and dates on that. 2015. I got it like pretty much that time. All right, let's go to the next. In the Microtech section of the case, this uh, I purchased those two knives at the same time. There were actually two more of these that were purchased. I had, at the time I was making a lot of money. I had just gotten a big bonus. I used some of it to buy 
a, a handful of knives. I bought three Ultratech OTFs to see which one I liked the best with every intention of selling the ones I didn't like, um, and the DOC all at the same time. Uh, so this is also a 2015. I had the bayonet version, the double-edged dagger version, and this one. I almost got rid of this one, uh, but this is the oh, pardon me. This is the one I kept because well, my daughter liked it, um, and I'm glad I did. This is this is a really nice this is a really nice showing. I actually have a Kydex sheath for this as well. Uh, yeah, but this this one's a lot of fun. Action on these is great, and if you have OTFs, I will tell you start using that KPL. Uh, the KPL Ultralight, like the action on this, it cleaned it up and it hasn't gotten gummy and things like that. But these, these are great. They're well-made. These are probably some of the best OTFs out there. There's like three, there's like three or four companies out there that are doing really, really good OTFs. You have Microtech and, and uh, Conquest Tactical, Heretic Knives and uh, uh, Hogue. And then, of course, then you have the Hawk Lock. So there you go. This is the Microtech Ultratech Tonto. This one is, you know, it's got the glass breaker and everything on it. And these, these are great. They carry well. This one's a little bit larger than I would like. But the next one is a solution to that. So let's take a look at the next this one. This is my other Microtech OTF that I have. This is the UTX85 Spartan blade shape version. Uh, this was a 25th anniversary and Blade Show West exclusive. We I picked this up at Blade Show West. Well, I picked this up through Nico, who got it at Blade Show West for me, and I just because I just didn't have the money, and then I just paid him for it. Did not have the money on me at the time. So this is, I have to say, I think that the UTX85 is about the perfect size for an out the front knife. Um, I was afraid I would not like the Spartan blade shape. I just wanted it because it was special. It was a special collector's item. Uh, has a 25th anniversary box, the silver, the one ounce Troy, one Troy ounce silver coin. Um, but then once I got it, I really do like this. It's nice and light. Um, it's an effective blade shape for what you would want it for, which as you can see, this would be something you'd use to let the air out of something. You don't want to say that too loud, though. Uh, but yeah, these are great. I like the the little bit of a blue tint to that and that hard coat that's on it. Um, the action on these, the action on these is great. I'm trying to keep it in focus. I'm still fighting with the autofocus on this. This one is not serialized, but as you can see, I had said I was not going to carry this. I lied. Um, glass breaker on this one's not as sharp. That's the other thing. Uh, glass breaker on these ones were pretty sharp. This one, nice rounded. Uh, you don't have that digging into you. Uh, but these are a lot of fun. These are great quality, quality, well-made knives. So there you go. The UTX 85. Basically, it's a 85% size of the regular Ultratech. All right. This, because it's, well, it's Anthony Marfione Jr. who owns Heretic Knives. It's Tony Marfione from Microtech's son. This is the Heretic Medusa. Mine is 626. That's the serial number. This is a button lock auto recurve Tonto done in CPM S35BN. I really like this knife. It It's just, I, I don't carry it because I don't want to screw up the finish on it. Uh, I carry it okay. I mean, you can see it's been carried. Uh, I got into something real hard with it one time. Um, it has the original H clip. It's done in a two-tone Cerakote. And like I said, it's just, it's a really well-made button lock auto. I, I like the Heretic autos. I like the Microtech autos. I think that they all, both of those companies are doing a great job. So if you were trying to get an auto, those would be, those would be one of my top re recommended, recommended companies would be either Heretic or Microtech. And then, you know, followed by a couple of other, the Hogue knives are everybody's good. Conquest Tactical, I haven't really gotten to handle but one. So there you go. The Heretic Medusa button lock auto. Only confusing thing about this one was why does it have a finger aperture when it's absolutely only one way to open it? So there you go. Let's move on. The next couple knives are Ferrum Forge designs. There's not a lot to talk about, but these, you've seen these a lot. This is the Ferrum Forge Crux. Uh, this was the second of their collaborations with Mastrop, the first being the uh, the Falcon. So the Crux was 
kind of their answer to a more straightforward work knife. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to say this. I don't want to say this and piss people off. This is what I could picture a reimagining of the uh, Chris Reeves Sabenza being like uh, if it was done as a flipper. It's done on bearings. All these knives that you've seen so far, they're all, except for the OTFs, are all on bearings. Uh, pretty much all of these knives are on bearings with a couple exceptions. But these knives were great. Uh, they take an insane edge. The S35VN on these was done very well. These were done by Wee Knife Company, but they were they were just what they were, plain and simple work knives. Uh, I do have one that has kind of a special serial number there. I can't ever get rid of this. If I do decide I'm getting rid of this, it goes to Christopher over at Farron Forge Knife Works. 858 is the area code where the shop was when this was, when this design happened. So that was the area code for the phone number. So yeah, Mastrop, Mastrop, uh, Got these released. We Knife Company did an incredible job on them. Action on these is up there with a lot of other knives. This doesn't get carried as much um, as I thought I would carry it. Uh, I'm not such a fan of the uh, not such a fan of the pocket clip, so it doesn't get as much carried. It's it's not that it doesn't. It's not that there's anything wrong with the pocket. Clip. It just doesn't sit the way I would want in my pocket because it's a little shorter clip. Uh, other than that, this this gets used a lot, as you can see. Um, I grab it and I do stuff with it. So there you go. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Another Fair and Forge design. This is the Fair and Forge Buck. This knife does get a lot of carry time. I don't mind the pocket clip on it. This knife is, I mean, it just has a striking image to it. It presents itself aggressively and it looks cool. It looks a lot like a Chinese ring sword or a cleaver, but this was called the Buck Buccaneer for short, or short for Buccaneer. Um, surprisingly, very thin handle. Um, you know, not thin, but narrow. Thin this way, not too thin this way, but narrow this way. But it does; it fits your hand really well. Action on it is so smooth for a production. I mean, this was a budget production knife. And the action on this is just so smooth. It it was up there. I did a video where I went through my case and judged them and picked what the smoothest knives were. This definitely was up there. It was a contender. I think it made it to like the one of the final rounds. But these were great. They cut really well. Nice broad blade. That flat grind comes down all the way down to the to a thin, thin apex or a thin thin behind the edge because it is so broad and it allows you to thin that as you're uh, transitioning from the spine down. So I, I love this knife. I don't carry it. it. I've carried it a lot. I just don't carry it these days as much as, as I should, I should get some of these knives out and just, just have them as a rotation of carry. But yeah, great, great knife. Farron Forge Buck, the Buccaneer done by Wee Knife Company released by Mastro. Take a break. Saw the dog like this. Are you asleep? She's asleep. <laughs> the dog's asleep in the corner. Yes. Like uh, we made it about halfway through my case. Halfway through my case, there was one video that I had to throw in this morning <laughs> um, because uh, I realized that the Master Blaster was missing. So I hope you guys enjoy this. A lot of people ask, like, we want to see your full collection. Like, they, everybody knows that there's knives. They're like, well, that wasn't in the video. That wasn't in the video. So we're just going to look at every knife that I own that's not just you know, crappy. So it's going to be a mini series Monday, Wednesday, Friday. There will not be any fast fives until I get done with this project. So guys, if you like them, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. I'm trying to do new stuff, trying to up the quality of stuff. So hopefully you're enjoying it. Um, if you want to support the channel, sometimes it's as simple as just sharing the content. I say that all the time, sharing the content with somebody you think would like it brings new subscribers and whole groups of people because then other people share them and things like that. Uh, but if you want to support the channel financially, there is a tab down below, a, a link where you can join the channel and, and get in on exclusive giveaways, exclusive content, um, early access to videos. Uh, we also do a lot of stuff that's off of YouTube for the paying members and things like that. But uh, there's other ways that I have affiliate links down below. If you're going to shop on Amazon, please use that. Uh, if you're going to use, if you're going to go to Amazon, please just use those. And uh the Ember Shirt Co. and uh, merch store down below. I have a coupon code for that. Uh, it is Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp. So that's it on this one, guys. I love you all. Be good to each other. Keep it clean in the comments section. It makes it easier to monetize. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I will see you 
in the next video.